So in the last several days, we've seen some very significant events. And those who say it's never happening, well, at least for a period of one day, it was happening. Israel was finally hit for all the terrorist actions that it's been taking, particularly for bombing an embassy of Iran and killing two Iranian generals. As usual, as Iran committed a grievously criminal act, a terrorist attack, killing two people, it was struck back against and has done nothing but spend the last, what, 48 hours crying victim or suffering for the consequences of its actions. We have the Western media and every simp of Israel and the U.S. empire making excuses for it. If anyone had done this to the United States or Israel, bombed one of their embassies, they would be calling for violence against that country. But if Israel does it to someone else, it's perfectly okay. There is a name for this kind of behavior. It's called being a bully. It's called being a coward. This is typical behavior of a coward, of a bully. Someone who feels that they can go around harming anybody they want for whatever reason they want, usually for their own self-gratification. But if anyone does anything to them, it's wrong and they need to seek revenge. And they are not culpable for any of the harm that they have brought on themselves by harming other people. At the main center of this bully mentality, this cowardly outlook, is a lack, an absolute lack of personal accountability. Israel is a genocidal monstrosity that has been murdering Gazans nonstop. It is literally a child-killing machine, an industrial death machine of civilians, particularly children, sees absolutely nothing wrong with what it's doing, and in fact goes out publicly and justifies being baby killers. But then cries victim if anyone or anything stands up to them. They deliberately, maliciously provoked an incident with Iran and then cried foul. Think about that. This is comparable to the behavior of a child who continually just grabs and takes whatever they want. And if they don't get what they want, they throw a temper tantrum. Now, imagine that child with a nuclear arsenal, which it denies having, which everyone knows that it does, and is a psychotic killer on top of it. That is Israel. That is what's happening here. Israel deliberately provoked a possible war with Iran. They got hit back as they rightfully deserve, as they intentionally provoked. And I suspect they were intentionally trying to start a war in order to get the United States to back up their failing country. What the media is not reporting is that Israel's economy is in a free fall. People are leaving Israel in droves. Its political instability is growing by the day. There are, there are mass, mass protests outside the home of Benjamin Netanyahu, which the media is just barely covering, calling for his resignation, calling for an end to the murder of Gaza. This is not a war. A war implies some kind of Agreement on both sides to fight. This is brutally one-sided. It's genocide. Blatantly genocide. Which very interestingly proves one thing. Israel is not the most documented genocide of all time. This is. This has dethroned the Holocaust as the most documented genocide of all time. And people like to say, how could the Holocaust have happened? How could people have just sat by and allowed it to happen? This is how it happened. 
right here. Every single person making excuses for Israel, trying to justify Israel's genocide right now, is exactly how that happened. Every time one of their Jewish neighbors went missing in the middle of the night, every time Kristallnacht happened, and every time people just were happy that it happened, this is a prime example of how that happened. This is why. This is how. It's the same thing. Every single person that has defended or supported Israel right through this entire genocide, even going back 75 years to the creation of the country, is responsible for this, has supported and continued this. You are culpable. You did this. You supported this. And now what we have, we have Israel calling for the United States to come in and start bombing Iran and wants it to start a world war in order to defend it, in order to uh, prop itself up. You know, somebody on Twitter made a really good point that this is actually very similar to what South Africa was defending right before its apartheid regime fell. It was demanding that puppet governments be set up in surrounding African countries calling for surrounding African countries to be overthrown in order for Israel to, in order for South Africa to prop itself up. Interesting how another apartheid state is calling for the exact same thing. Another illegitimate murderous government, which you could very well argue, and I would believe Israel is worse than apartheid South Africa. Because at least apartheid South Africa let black people live. As horrible as it was. So. This is the situation that we find ourselves in. And we find the so-called Arab states. These, who, the, who profess their love for Islam. Like Jordan. Standing by watching their own brothers be killed aiding the country doing it. The King of Jordan opening its airspace to British and American war jets, uh, warplanes, to come in and help defend Israel. Showing what a complete treacherous bastard he really is. Now think about this. The head of CENTCOM declared that Iran would be completely incapable of doing something like this again. It's, they burned up all of their offensive capabilities. That's completely false. That's completely not true. Iran only launched about a couple hundred drones. They have thousands of those. They could very easily do this again. In fact, it's very easy to say almost all of Israel's anti-air defense has been used up. In fact, independent analysis have very clearly said that the expenditure that Iran has gone through to carry out this attack was about $35 million. The expenditure that Israel alone, this doesn't count how much the United States spent on its effort and the UK spent on its effort def defending Israel in this particular incident. Israel spent almost $2 billion it would be far more accurate to say that Israel cannot afford to do it again. But then again, it's got the deep pockets of the American taxpayer, right? As Joe Biden and Trump try not to forget that Trump made Jerusalem the capital or recognized it as the capital and Trump has completely sucked up to Israel, if not even more than the Democratic Party has, but somehow we're supposed to believe Trump is an anti-imperialist, even though Trump kills Soleimani, but somehow Trump is an imperialist, even though this is just a thinly veiled cover for you being a homophobe. 
there really is no choice in the empire. You know why Marx kind of had kind of made the argument that you're supposed to overthrow the system, not simp for it. That tactical voting was complete nonsense and why it has always been recognized as complete nonsense and that you don't change the system. You're supposed to overthrow it because you cannot reform capitalism. I mean, it, it's amazing how we have to keep going over the same lessons that we already learned a hundred years ago. Sorry, more than a hundred years ago. Because first world people are not willing to actually fight for revolution. And I think that the last hundred years should have actually proven that to them now. To make them admit that they're not willing to fight because, you know, they kind of don't do it. But I'm getting off topic. Israel is blatantly playing the United States for a fool. And we know why. Because a free Palestine would not be an ally of the United States or the UK. And why should they be? Why would they be allied to the people who have aided Israel's genocide of them for 75 years? If Israel falls, what will replace it will not be the United States ally. The, the United States is really just preserving its own ally, and that's all this is. There is no conspiracy about Israel secretly controlling the United States. That's complete anti-Semitic nonsense. That's conspiracy theory garbage. This is not a conspiracy. This is just geopolitics. This is just money. This is just imperialism. This is just spheres of influence. This is just capitalism. This is not a conspiracy. It's not some evil plot. It's literally just the functioning of the system that you don't want to admit is going on, that you don't want to admit is part of the system itself. A lot of people do not like the United States and the Middle East, and for a very good reason. It may have official allies in certain governments, but the people in those countries want nothing to do with it. And the strongest, most ardent ally of the United States has been Israel. And just happens to be the most genocidal, psychopathic state in the entire country. Never mind that, you know, most of the, what is it, uh, the UAE's population are slaves. And about a billion criticisms that you could make of Saudi Arabia and how god-awful that, that government is, if you can call it that. It's questionable whether or not it's, it's a government or a quasi-theocracy. You could argue definitions, but my, my point is clear. And nothing is really more, I, I don't even know the word for it, Stockholm Syndrome, even though, by the way, just speaking strictly as a, a student of psychology, Stockholm Syndrome is not a thing. It, it, it literally does not exist. The amount that many in the U.S. public are willing to go through to defend Israel, how much of their own tax dollars they're willing to throw away to defend a genocide that is literal that is roughly comparable to that of the Nazi genocide is staggering. Why are there so many Americans that are so dedicated to giving themselves over and their own tax money over to murdering Palestinians? They would fight tooth and claw to make sure that their own children in their country wouldn't get a lunch. They would fight tooth and nail and scream Nazi, 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 commie, 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 if you offered a sandwich to a hungry child in their own country at school. But give billions upon billions of dollars to Israel to murder children is perfectly okay. What would be the motivation in someone's mind to do something like that? Why? What would be the logical process in someone's mind to, to, to support something like that? Because they identify with them. 
America, the land of stolen land from natives, is not really any different than Israel, the land of stolen land from natives, Palestinians. Think about it. The Israelis, Zionists, not Jews, Zionists, are white Europeans that have come from many European countries, uh, countries, many from America, and just decided that they now own a piece of that land and have literally forced people who've lived off that land for, what, five, ten thousand years because they're God. And I use that because Zionism has no God because they're not Jewish. It says that they should, they're the true owners of that land. The idea of any government taking any religious claim seriously is already bad enough in itself. But to do this is utterly ridiculous. Now, I could point out that over and over again in the Jewish religion, which Israel claims to be founded on, it specifically says that the promised land can only come about as a result of divine creation. And that the creation of Israel as a state is a heresy because it was created by man. And that the word Israel actually refers to the collection of Jewish people, not a physical place. So it's a, you know, doubly a heresy there. I could point that out. Or I could point out the polls show that the most non-religious country in the world is Israel. Amazing how this country that is supposedly founded on the religion of Judaism, which it isn't, and that's its excuse for existence, is made up mostly of people who don't believe in that religion. A little bit ironic, don't you think? A little bit of a complete BS, don't you think? And I could go on and on. I could talk endlessly about this and... Every single evil that Israel is about, I could make every single comparison of the settler colonial nature of Israel and the United States and Canada. Just as the settlers in the U.S. and Canada were completely unwilling to listen to the people that they were murdering there, Israel is unwilling to listen to the people that they are murdering there. Essentially, in every way, shape, or form, the UN is completely useless. Exactly what has the UN done but prosecute African warlords? And don't get me wrong, a lot of those African warlords really needed to be prosecuted for crimes against humanity. But where are they when the pro-Western ones, the, the pro-Western war crimes, crimes against humanity to be prosecuted. Nowhere to be found. Anywhere. The fact that anybody regards this organization as having any credibility whatsoever is laughable. The UN is really only good for two things. Keeping records and having statistics about things that happen worldwide. Like if you want to know what percentage of population this, what percentage of population that, what is the global rate of such and such, they keep very, very good records. If you want to distribute aid in places, they are good at doing that. But in terms of actually stopping any problems, they're completely useless. As a political entity, they're completely useless. And I think we all know why. Any law, anywhere, is only effective as the ability to enforce it. And the UN doesn't have any ability to enforce any actual laws, which makes the whole organization, in this regard, completely useless. Israel can violate law after law after law since the founding of its, since, since its own very founding, ignore resolution after resolution, which it legally has to follow, 
and nothing gets done. And then comes Israel crying to the UN, begging them to censor, uh, to penalize, to sanction Iran for daring to hit Israel back for the crime that it just committed against Iran because the UN would not do anything for the crime that Israel committed. The, I would say the logical disconnect is astounding, but there is no, there is no logical disconnect. Israel knows that it's completely lying. They know they're full of it. They know it. Like they're, they're not stupid or delusional. They, they know they're lying. This is more audacity than anything else. They're literally rubbing it in everyone's faces. We will do whatever we want, and there is nothing you can do to stop us. And they're crying right now. It's because somebody dared do something back. So Israel threatens like it's going to do something back to Iran for Iran daring to stand up for itself. That's a mistake. And the U.S. knows it, which is why the U.S. is calling for restraint and asking for Israel not to retaliate because Iran will fire back. They'll fire back again and they'll fire back even worse. Because even as the Israeli media noted, Iran only attacked military targets. They didn't attack civilian population centers. And then Israelis went out onto Twitter and other social media saying, ha ha, look at these civilian centers. They didn't even, they didn't even hit us. They stopped all the shots because Iran wasn't even aiming at them. Think about the mentality of Israelis. They normalize murdering civilians so much that when it doesn't happen, they can't even cognitively process why it's not happening. They don't even get that other people don't murder civilians. They, they, don't, they don't even understand that. There's a lot more I could say, but I've used up enough of your time now. So I think basically I've gotten my point across. And here's to hoping that the God awful evil that is Israel comes to an end very, very soon. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.